The common name lobster could be referring to many different kinds of animals, some of which aren't even that closely related. Most people think of these guys when they hear the word lobster. This is a clawed lobster. Clawed lobsters live in the ocean, usually in colder waters, and obviously have claws. But they aren't the only marine lobsters with claws. There are also reef lobsters, who are related to clawed lobsters, but are separated from them based on the number of claws they have. Clawed lobsters technically have six claws, the first two are just so big, the others tend to get overlooked. Then there are crayfish, or crawdads, or whatever you want to call them, because apparently they have about a bajillion common names. They aren't really lobsters at all, though I guess you could argue they're freshwater lobsters. Crayfish, an animal we don't commonly call lobster, are more closely related to clawed lobsters than some other animals we do commonly call lobster. Confused yet? Just wait, there's more. Then we have spiny lobsters who could more or less pass off as lobsters without claws. I've even heard some people guess that spiny lobsters are female lobsters. Technically speaking, they're not wrong because there are female spiny lobsters, but they're also completely wrong. I mean, come on. Look at this sexy lady. We're still not finished yet, either. There are also slipper lobsters who barely get a pass as a lobster, but if you squint your eyes, you can kind of see it. Also, let's not forget to mention furry lobsters, who sound like something I might have just made up to mess with you guys. And then of course there are squat lobsters, who I'm pretty certain are just crabs in lobster cosplay. So yeah, that's a lot of lobsters. How about this? Eventually, we'll get around to covering all of these groups, but for now, we'll just give you some wacky facts and cultural history of these beastly arthropods. Good? Well, you're still here, so it must be. The name lobster is thought to be an old English butchering of a Latin word that means something like locust or grasshopper. Now that I'm thinking about it, I do kind of see a resemblance. Apparently back then, any unknown arthropod was given this name. Maybe that's why we have so many lobsters today? In Greek mythology, lobsters were a piece of the chimeric creatures known today as ichthyocentaurs, which are depicted to have the upper body of a man, the front legs of a horse, the tail of a fish, and lobster claws protruding from their heads. In some versions of the Kraken's tail, this fabled beast of the deep is shown as a giant lobster. And in Disney's Atlantis, The Lost Empire, another ancient creature, a leviathan, takes the form of a lobster. In Costa Rica, amulets that resemble lobsters have been found, their meaning possibly concerning the high-ranking socioeconomic status of those that don them. In modern times, lobsters take the stage as a top-tier culinary dish accorded to us by the gods on high. Though, it should be noted that in their history, lobsters were seen as peasant food and fed to the lowest classes of people as they were titled the cockroaches of the sea. Oh, and there's an essay by David Foster Wallace about them that you should probably read at some point in your life. Hopefully that gives you some insight to the diversity of lobsters. I realize this episode was a bit of a break from the norm, but we'll come back to all these individual groups later on down the line. For more facts on lobsters, check out the links in the description. If you liked this style of video, be sure to let us know by giving a thumbs up and commenting. We'll see you next time on Animal Fact Files.